Hey everyone, uh, I want to talk to you about the Behringer Wing console and my experiences using it over the course of about a week, learning how to use it, shooting tutorial videos, and just learning all the ins and outs of the console and what I think about it and what I think about churches buying it. I got to start with the things I didn't like about it. There's quite a list. So you're going to get a very unfiltered, unbiased review. Um, Behringer did not send us this console. They are not paying us to do this video. It was actually sent to us by our friends at Amplio Systems. They had one sitting on a shelf and I called the guys and was like, hey, a ton of churches use those. What do you think? You send it to us and we'll shoot some videos. So that's where this came from. Um, the biggest takeaway for me about this console is how hard it was to use. And I was a little thrown off by that because most consoles in this price range, so this Surface is about uh, $3,000 without any stage rack. So there's a ton of consoles, you know, kind of in that, that sector of the market. Um, they're usually not very hard to use. But I think what happened was, and I'm gonna assume a lot here, okay? They wanted to pack so many features into this console that it was just not thought through very well. The biggest pain point to me is actually the poor design of the GUI, the graphic user interface. Just learning the flow of it is really clunky. It's not really thought through that well. Um, I really believe that good design doesn't cost any more than bad design. You know, when we're talking about budget-friendly consoles like this, of course you'd expect the faders on this console to not be as nice of faders as you'd find on a Digico ST7. Like, no one's surprised by that, or the buttons. But with the GUI, it's just, man, it's very, very difficult to get it going. It took me about, I'd say probably an hour just to understand the workflow of the patching. So like, you know when you're using a piece of software and everything's all new and something kind of clicks and you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. And you can kind of flow within in the menus. It took about an hour for me to do that just inside the patching. And I've been doing this a long time. I've done this with a lot of consoles. It was pretty frustrating. Honestly, it was frustrating shooting all the videos that we did. Like we'd hit cut and I'd be like, oh, it's kind of exhausting. Um, you know, mixing on the console, a different story. It Once you get it set up, like it was fine. Um, it has tons of features that no other console that I've seen so far has. Like it's got loads of modeled plugins that I think they did a decent job modeling. And you can put an 1176 as your onboard compressor, not a plugin, not an insert, the onboard. Same thing with the EQ. You want an SSL or an EVQ as the console, the channel EQ? Well, you can do that. Um, a lot of people talk about this console because it's got built in auto tune. It's not any good. It doesn't have very many adjustments you can't set the keys on it so i actually don't think i would ever use it on any singer because it's just going to pull it to the closest note chromatically it would be better used i think on a bass guitar or a synth and somebody hits a wrong note actually no not a synth maybe a bass guitar like something that's like kind of out of tune but not really so yeah that's that's really it like i said mixing on it way different if it's just you know walk up everything's dialed in and mixing that's a different story but setting the console up and like putting volunteers on it week in and week out that they may have to navigate some things in the menus. I don't know. I'm actually more of a fan of the M32, to be honest. I know the IO is a lot different and the capabilities of the consoles are way different. This does a ton more, but at the end of the day, like it's got to work. There were loads of bugs with the screen. We're using the latest firmware, 1.11. And uh, when we got the console, it was on 1.1 or 1.01 maybe, and there are still bugs with the screen. So I'm wondering if it's like a hardware thing, like um, different sections of the screen would just start selecting themselves when I wasn't even touching them. You'd have to power cycle the console and sometimes that would fix it, sometimes it wouldn't. Now compared to all the other consoles in that same price range, you know, the Allen & Heath SQ series, the Persona Studio Live, the Yamaha TF, um, I'm, I'm probably missing a few. They're all within, you know, 15 to 20% of each other in price range. So maybe 1500 bucks or so. If you're dead set on wanting to try this out, 
I think you should try some other stuff, okay? Now, if you own one of these and I have horribly offended you because you guys love your Behringer wing, then that's great, okay? Lots of consoles have issues and bugs and quirks, but starting from scratch, I don't know that I would recommend a church, a bar, anywhere that is gonna want one of these to just dive in and just go get it just from reading the reviews. I think you're going to turn it on and find some things that are really frustrating, but then once you start mixing, you may be like, wow, I've, I've always wanted a distressor on my snare drum. And I had too, and it sounded awesome. You can go watch the video for yourself. So it's like, you know, mixing, lots of fun. Setup, not fun at all. Lots of quirks, you know, and it looks like, you know, with each firmware, more stuff comes out. I actually found out more about this console on Reddit than I did Behringer's website because the documentation is so bad. There's no user manual. There's a quick start manual, but that's about it. So hopefully with our videos, you're going to learn a lot, but like the super in-depth, like level 300 stuff on this console, you kind of just have to fend for yourself. Even some of the power users online and forums that I was searching, there are buttons in the menu that they would write in their, their diagnostics. I don't know what this feature does. I can't figure it out. So there's lots of stones left unturned that I think Behringer has even yet to discover or tell us what they are. So that's about it. I know that's super raw, super honest. Like I said, if you have one, great. If you're getting great results with it, that's awesome, more power to you. But if not, and you're considering this, there's a lot of other consoles I think you should consider.